Hi, this is Kevin, and today you'll learn about task-based UI, otherwise known as Microsoft's inductive user interface. Take a look at this wireframe example. Is this bad UI or not? What about this UI? Does it look like it isn't designed correctly, but you can't quite put your finger on it? Well, I'm here to put your finger on it with task-based UI. Task-based UI, or what Microsoft calls Microsoft's inductive user interface, is a way to organize your UI to make it easy to use and easy to learn. Task-based UI isn't really a formal method, but a series of tips to improve the usability of your system. Now, Microsoft has an article about inductive UI, which I have provided in the description below. It's boring and repetitive. I mean, you can already tell by the name. However, my tips on task-based UI are better. They're based on inductive UI with a little more added in. Well, where are those tips? Let's get started. Tip number one, focus each page or screen on one main task. If you have subtasks that the user can perform, then make those subtasks be secondary links on the page. Why does this work? Well, most UI designs fail because it asks, rather indirectly, the user to do multiple things at the same time. We humans cannot usually do two or more things at the same time, and even if we could, we really can't do them very well. Say we have an app that is used by a local coffee company. The front page of the app might look like this. What is the task on this page? To view the order. The subtask? Well, you can add an item, you can edit or delete items, or you can complete your order. Notice the ordering of the elements is from left to right, then top to bottom. This represents the ordering of options available to the user that follows the user's business processes. The user clicks on Add New Item. Now the user is presented with one task, to add the item. They can select a drink category, potentially customize it, or go back. Again, note the visual ordering of the UI elements from left to right matches the user's business process. The user selects Ice Tea, then the user is given options, and hits Add New Item. Also notice that the button is Add New Item and not Create New Item, so it matches the title of the panel. And now we are back to the View Your Order page with a brand new order. Tip number two, make the title of your page, panels, and buttons be commands to the viewer. Commands make it clear to the user what the expected tasks of the system are. An easy way to do this is to use what I call the Frau Farbissina method. In the 1997 movie Austin Powers, there's a character, Frau Farbissina, who always shouts a command at the top of her voice. Try to model your pages, panels, and buttons to be as if Frau Farbissina was shouting it. If it doesn't seem like something Frau Farbissina would say, then change it. In the example page I created, I can clearly hear Frau Farbissina shout, view your order, and add new item, and complete the order when I am viewing the page. It is evident to me what I should be doing on this page. I do not need to contemplate or ponder the consequences of what a particular action will do. Another benefit of making tasks be like commands is that they fit really well with use cases or business rules if you are using clean architecture. They also fit really well in case you are using CQRS, or Command Query Response Segregation, design pattern. I will talk about clean architecture and CQRS in a future video. Tip number three, be mindful of your model. How your page is laid out is determined, all else being equal, by your domain model. The main properties of your model should be on the main screen. Child models should be in a separate screen. This is important for two reasons. One, your model typically follows your business process, so it would be intuitive to the user and the developers designing it. Two, it prevents what is commonly referred to as CRUD-based UI design. Let me show you an example. So in here, the child entities like item one, item two, and item three, as well as the parent entity models, are all laid out on the same page. Having so many possible edits in the same page increases the complexity of the page and also makes it harder to use and learn tasks, especially, for example, 
if clicking on one checkbox enables or disables certain fields. The screens on your UI should closely match your rich domain model. On the left, I have a simple order screen that we saw earlier. On the right, some pseudocode of the domain model corresponding to the order. Notice how the Add New Item and Complete Order buttons correspond to the Add New Item and Complete Order methods that mutate the object. Having this approach not only fits the business process, but also guides us to use rich domain models and avoid plain old objects. This is an example of a CRUD-based UI, which you want to avoid when you can. A CRUD-based UI is when you have a lot of input fields on the page and one or two lonely buttons at the bottom. This pattern is used to enter data, but it should be used with care. Another example of a CRUD-based UI is Microsoft Access. If your application is more data entry and less business logic, then this may be appropriate. It has its place, but usually there are a lot of business logic in applications nowadays. Very few applications only care about data entry. So try to avoid CRUD-based UI unless you absolutely have to. Tip number four, check your links. This basically means three things. First, minimize the number of links to other pages that are not part of the main task. Next, Keep track of the links that the user has to click to complete a task. The fewer actions the user has to make, the better. Finally, make each link or button action clear to the user on what the effect will be. Let's look at some examples. Here, the task that the user needs to perform is in orange, but there are so many links everywhere. This might confuse the user, or at the very least, it dilutes the main purpose of the task. Make each button or link explicit. The user should know what will happen when this button is clicked. No surprises. Going back to the coffee app, if we clicked on the Add New Item button, it's clear that we're going to add a new item. It wouldn't be so great if clicking on the Add New Item button fired off this Rube Goldberg process that the user didn't know about. Tip number five, try to follow established UI patterns. Model the screen using simple UI components such as buttons, lists, checkboxes, and so on. Use simple design patterns such as master detail. Try to avoid things like fancy UI interfaces because they get out of style after a few years. And they're usually not present in wireframe UI mockup tools. Here on the left, you can see standard UI components such as text boxes, radio buttons, and checkboxes. On the right, you have an accordion, which isn't a very helpful UI component. Let's go over the two UI screens at the beginning of the video and now see if we can evaluate it. What's wrong with this UI? It's not clear what the main task is. Is each panel a command? Do you think Frau Frabisna would say person information and general information? Hmm, maybe. Is this UI mindful of its model? Nope. The addresses go right off the page. Finally, the UI has whiz-bang UI components like accordions. So that's a negative point against it. Like, hey, 2010 called and it wants its accordions back. Anyway, UI is always a subjective topic, but in my opinion, Based on the tips I have given, the UI design for this page could be better. What about this UI? Well, can the user only perform one main task here? That's not clear, because there are multiple tasks the user can do here. They can edit the date, edit the employee, add an employee, and so on. That's kind of confusing to me at least. Can you imagine Frau Frobissina saying the title of the panel and the buttons? Not for the title, but yes for the buttons. So that is a good part of this design, and it doesn't use any fancy UI components, so that's good too. Does this UI follow established patterns? No. The list of employees goes right down the page. Is the design mindful of links? Yes, it appears to be. Is the design mindful of the model and let the model drive the UI? Nope. The child panels would probably be better off as links to other pages or a pop-up instead of putting everything on one page. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed learning about task-based UI. I gotta say, I had a lot of fun making this video. If you like this content about software and architecture, please hit like and subscribe. I hope you had a good day, and I hope to see you in the next video.